Hello there, and welcome once again to my little arty corner of the internet. I, I'm Angela, and I love to art, and I love drawing, I love intricate drawings, I love using pens, and I dabble with other media from time to time, although a lot of it vexes me. Digital's okay, but that's me. But I do a lot of work in my sketchbooks, more so now perhaps than I have done in the past, random bits of paper everywhere. Now I have it all contained in a book which is a good thing. I'd just like to say thank you at this point to everybody who's subscribed to this channel, to my channel, who has given me thumbs up for videos and who perhaps has shared the videos with others who would be interested in them. I thank you very much for doing this and thank you also for the lovely comments that are always left. Um, I haven't answered yesterday's batch entirely. I'll be doing that while this video is uploading or, or shortly afterwards. And just thank you. And if you're new here, I hope you enjoy what you see and that you will draw along with me because this is what these videos are really about, is helping you to draw and to have fun with your art and not judge yourself against other people really, is to be you and accept this is how you do things and see the beauty in it, hopefully, in the way that others see the beauty in your work. Very, very critical of ourselves, and I'm not going to get into the reason why that is. But, with no further ado, you can see the screen is filled here with variations of Huggins, because this is what we're working on, and yeah, I'm going to do yet another video today of it. But it's important, I think, because any of the principles or ideas that are here can apply to so many other grid patterns, and, um, and it's just... And it's, it, it, it's a chance to practice patterns. It's a chance to practice your penmanship or your, your skills at drawing. Um, find motor control, hand-eye coordination. The more you practice, the better you are. And I'm aware that I draw extremely neatly, um, even when I'm, I think I'm not being neat. Apparently to other people, it's really neat. Um, I see all the little imperfections in my work, but I'm really quite precise as well about how I draw lines. And I... I want to say that I draw my lines with deliberation. I don't do sketchy lines. I draw a th one fluid line. If it's a bit wonky, it remains a bit wonky, mostly. Though if it's really wonky, then I do something with it. I don't try and start all over or sometimes I might need to erase it, but that will come if I scan in digitally. But otherwise, I try and work it into the pattern, into whatever I'm working on and make my peace with it. And sometimes those little wobbles that push you to do something a bit more creative than usual lead you down other far more creative paths. So this sheet here on the top, this is what we were working on yesterday, some Huggins variations. I haven't done anything more to it. This is my, well, part of my page in my sketchbook. I can't get the whole page on the screen, but you've seen it. And it's like a, a crazy sampler of patterns here and oddly I quite like this because there's so much to see in it and it's it is crazy it is absolutely crazy but it's fun and as something to refer to it's a fun way of putting in those variations I think and then I've got this page where I've got like individual hugging cells the the um oh what do they call them in Fragment. Fragments from Huggins with patterns in. This is upside down because I tend to turn my sketchbooks upside down if I don't like drawing on a particular page. On, I don't like drawing on the left-hand page here, so I turn it upside down because it's easier to draw on. Yeah, quirks. It's me. But does it matter? No, not one bit. Um, I've even got letters as fillers. So... I think that's quite fun and I might do that actually today. So with no further ado, let me just pop this out of the way. Let me get my mug of tea and hopefully put it somewhere where I'm not going to throw it out, throw it about and over as I'm still having my morning mug of tea. I've actually been up for a while and I've been drawing for um, an hour or so downstairs. Well, you know, after having breakfast and watching some stuff on YouTube, catching up on things. Um, which is lovely and drawing yeah and I didn't sit in bed because I have a tendency that I'll stay in bed all day if I can and do nothing much 
Um, today's one of those days where I could do that, but I decided, no, come on, Angela, get your backside into gear. You've got things to do today. And I, I do, I need to go out. I've got to go to the pharmacy to pick my prescription up. I need to get a blood sample posted off and I need to do a bit of shopping, which scares me because there's people there and people scare me. So I'm going to do some lettering in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some block letters. And I'm going to pop them in like this. I'm not worrying if they're equally spaced or anything else. I'm just going to pop them in. Now that would make the top of the E. I want a, a I, I do want a gap at the end, so I'm going to pop that in. But I'm going to draw that part of the E in like that. And then I'm not going to go around the letters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around outline the negative space. Positive space is the space inside a motif. So inside the letter L is positive space. Inside the berries is positive space. Inside the stars is positive st space. Everything around it is negative space. So the space around the stars is negative. These little black bits are negative. And in between the letters here is negative. So I'm going to focus on those negative areas and draw in and fill those in with either pattern or something else. Let us stand out as they are, but it's quite fun to do something otherwise. Um, I wouldn't normally draw them inside a band like this, which does give the top and bottom of the letters. It's quite fun. Perhaps I'll do that on another one and I'll draw, I'll do that in a moment. But let's have a look, what can I fill these in with? Um, I think I might do some Knight's Bridge. Now this is going to be interesting because I, I'm not going to try and make these lines match up at all, but I'm going to try to make the bend of the lines match the bend of the Huggin shape. And if I have a few more lines in one section than I did in another, I'm not too worried. Um, if you want to be finickety about it, then by all means draw these lines in pencil. And um, because I'll be treating each section as an individual part, and I'm going to split this one, but I'm going to split it close closer to one side than the other and I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me colouring each of these in but I just think this will be a bit of a fun kind of background. But the, the advantage of drawing big you know I've got I've got a Huggins grid here that is as big well it's, it's nearly A5 in size so it's huge and I've drawn the the grid itself really big so there's few huggins but they've got lots of sp oh look at that I, i've mucked up there a little bit oh, we'll do that then there we are that makes a bit more sense nobody would notice unless they look really closely perhaps oh there we go we'll do that there we are perfect it's a bit on the mucky side so I, i'm just not even thinking about how they'd match up or whether they would match up with the other parts. I just think this would be a really nice background. It's busy enough, the letters will stand out. The grid lines sort of like match up with the edge of the letters mostly. Just emphasise those edges, helps bring them out. And I'll just do this one here. what I'm doing is, well not quite, what I thought I was doing isn't what I am doing. I said I wasn't going to make you watch me do all of these, didn't I? 
you get to a point where you think, oh, I might as well carry on. Oh, look, none here. And what about here? There we go. Let's do it in the, the holes and the letters. There is a proper name for these spaces in letters, but I have absolutely no idea what it is. Though I, I've seen it, but it does not stick. It does not compute. And I, I'm really not too worried whether they actually need a name or not for me to be able to hand letter. Do I really need to know all of these? I suppose if I wanted to communicate to somebody who's in the know as well. But uh, I'm just drawing letters. Do you know, I'm going to split this into a smaller one there. And there we go. So that's lo that's love. So these are big enough that you can put these these kinds of things in. Don't be worried about your lettering because if you base it on your own hand letter, your own writing, but you draw it rather than handwrite. Hand lettering is about drawing letter shapes, not writing them. And you have your own kind of style when you do this. So for this one, I'm putting these pencil borders in and I'm going to put my favourite word in here at the moment. Or one of my favourite words. I'm making no effort to stick to any particular font or anything else. I'm just drawing the shapes of the letters. And this one is where we do just draw around. We don't draw, it's, we're outlining the spaces between the letters and inside them. So I'm not doing the top and the bottom of the letter, but I'm doing the top and the bottom of the space in between. So we're mucking about with the negative space. And if it all goes a bit wonky, it all goes a bit wonky as you're drawing around them. It matters not. And the odd thing is, even though I have not drawn the letters, I've just outlined the space between them, suddenly you can see the letters. And so it's these spaces here that I'm going to fill in. With pattern. You could do different patterns in them or just stick to one. I'm just doing some tipple because it's quick and easy. Well, it's easy. I don't know about quick. Depends how big you draw the circles, I think. I've got quite small spaces so I, I do want quite dense little circular shapes. They're not perfect circles. You're just going to squish them in and if they only part of them will fit in to the space because it hides under the the edge of the line. I can do that. Okay, these ones need some. And with this, it's quite forgiving if, if I need to make the lines a little bit thicker to tidy lines up. It tipples quite a bit quite forgiving of that because by drawing these circles up to the edge and filling in all the little spaces between them we're getting thicker lines than we would normally so it behaves itself and then once these shapes are done it really helps to bring out those letters within even though I haven't drawn the letters themselves which is quite fun It does mean that we've got the spaces where the letters are in the top and bottom border, so we could put patterns there. I think I'd be tempted to do it with a coloured pen or a grey pen. But I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. And uh, think about what I do next. 
this is no rush really to get everything finished. In a sketchbook there is no no reason why you have to finish everything. It's about ideas, it's about practice, it's about trying things out. And right, okay, which one of you did not point out I hadn't filled the inside of this let P in there? I've done it now. But there's something else. So I just thought that was a bit fun and it's something you, you can easily do. Pencil the letters in first, space them out. I don't know if you noticed, but with piece, I started with the middle, middle letter. So I put that in the middle, knowing that I'd need two letters on each side. I couldn't do that with love, but I knew love would fit in that space. It's up to you how you do it. But have a go and you never know what will happen. Okay, so back to the tangly patterns. Um, one that I particularly love, and I am going to do it, is I do love a bit of diva dance. I can't remember if I did diva dance on the first video where we were playing around with, where I was playing around with, we're playing around with, because hopefully you're joining in with all of this, um, was diva dance. But I'm going to do a slightly different version of diva dance here, which is diva dance, but it's called rock and roll, because we're going to work in spirals. And diva, diva dance in these spiral shapes, it always reminds me of roses when we get to the end. So I'm starting in the middle and working my way out. And I stop part way round so I can go back and on this last part of the circuit, I can go and put some of these black lumps and bumps in and then I can go around them. And I tend to stop just after the last lump and bump on the round before I go back and add some more. You can add as many or as few as you like. You can have them big blobs or small ones. It doesn't matter. Most I, I call them blobs. I'm sure there must be a more technical term. Blobs will do. Semicircles? Well, they're not really because you can make them almost any kind of shape you like. But then you draw a line that auras in Zen's entangled term, that goes around them, about roughly equidistant. But if you make a mistake, it's easy enough to alter if you make it too wide. If you make it too narrow, there's not much you can do. If you make the line too wide, then there are things you can do. And I could try and do make it too wide, but I know if I try to do something, it doesn't work. So we'll see if it happens on any of these ones here as I go around. Oh, there we go. This one is a bit bigger gap here. I've got a choice. I could put another lumpy bump in there, or I could have a lumpy bump that fits in this circle like that and at the end of the day nobody will tell the difference so well, you could have just left it and nobody would know that it wasn't what you intended and sometimes that's the best thing about things like this is you're the only one who knows that if something isn't exactly what you intended but you have that choice to say okay I didn't do a good job with that one or you know that went a bit wide so I can either leave it and accept that's how it is meant to be, or I can go back and do something about it. There's always ways of doing things about this. So I'm going to add just another lumpy bump there. One aura, two auras on the outside. I just like to leave a couple of lines in fact I think I might put three in around the outside of this where there are none of the the black lumps it sounds so inelegant doesn't it when I say lumps the black shapes so it creates a nice border or a nice yeah it's a border that it helps to separate one from the other so let's do another one then
I don't know what it is about diva dance. Do you know, it took me... It took me a long time to become comfortable or to, to really enjoy this pattern. And I think it was watching some of Zentangle videos on YouTube um, one winter a, a year or so ago, I think it was. It wasn't last winter, it was the winter before. When I wasn't very good at, you know, the world had got on top of me a little bit and... Um, you know, I, was, I found it comforting to, to watch these and sit in bed and sometimes draw along with them. Maybe not what the Zentangle or Tanglers were doing, but, you know, looking at the patterns and trying variations even then, I think, without realising how much that I loved it. But I saw somebody do diva dance and I thought, oh, is that how you do it? Because... I don't know about everybody here because I don't know. But I can look at the sometimes look at the the so-called deconstructions of tangle patterns, you know, the step by step how you draw this. And I follow them and they just don't make any sense to me. I can't see what I'm doing wrong or what what I'm doing that is different that means that what I end up with isn't exactly what it's supposed to be and it ends up a bit of a mess but if I watch somebody do it they can be following those steps perfectly and suddenly things will just fall into place and I go oh so that's how you do it or I sometimes go ah, that's why oh, I can't do it because I just can't draw in that kind of way I need to do things slightly differently and so I off I go and that's what I do okay so that was diva dance rock and roll I did I'm sure I did diva dance with you I don't I don't think so but I've got if you want to do the straight version of diva dance there's two ways of doing it you can either do it vertically, horizontally, I suppose you could do it diagonally if you want to, have it, you know, sort of like curving out to fill the space. Um, yeah, if I bring my book in, you can see that here's the diva dance that goes, you know, with the stripes are vertical. Up there I've got the diva dance rock and roll. I've got one that's horizontal though, it doesn't look like I have in there. If you spot it, tell me. I can't see another one, so perhaps I didn't. But I do like it quite like this. I like it with the, the borders as well, so it fills that inner space. It's a very, very graphic kind of pattern, which I really like. As you know, I like, like high contrast. But it works quite nicely here because we've got some quite open patterns over here. And now I've got one couple of things that are quite dense in, in black. So it's nice to have that contrast. Um, this lovely large shape also is perfect for filling with something like, let's have a look if I can create, let's do a flower in the middle. So I'm going to pop the centre of the flower here just put that to suggest we've got a centre and I'm just going to draw some petals around it and I'm going to get those petals to touch the outside edge even if I have to alter the size of them I'm just putting two lines at the base of each petal to suggest some shadow or structure like that and then I've got these two places and I'm going to fill these with leafy frondy kinds of things it's not mooka 
it's more of a teardrop shape at the end and I'm overlapping them it's more of that round a rounded you know extended teardrop shape almost and I'm going to do the same on this side I'm not going to try and mirror or do this side exactly the same as the other actually that would have been nice I, I had thought about that the other side putting two in like this so they create a heart but I didn't so I'm drawing them behind each other so I've got that space filled and then I've got all of these little spaces in between which I can fill with pattern I could pop perks in I could fill them with black I could actually pop some smaller versions of these in perhaps to some of the bigger spaces just to fill some in like so which is quite nice not perfect but it's quite nice and I think I'll leave that because I'm undecided whether I want to do anything with the background. I feel I need to, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. Perhaps if I start with a big circle underneath and then draw some others in as if we've got perks in here. Perk are orbs that you sort of tuck one behind the other and squash them in. This area, I'm not even going to try to get any perks in here. Not this morning. I think I'll just fill that up. Okay, I've got perks there, so I need some here. I might actually tuck them behind this little frond here. as if that's lying above them and I could just keep on adding these in right the way around the shape but I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure about that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the background on the other side with cross hatching not a pattern just cross hatch well it is a pattern but cross hatching is where you use lines to create shadow texture I'm not going to try and keep the lines going the same direction I'm just going to draw them in the way that keeps comfortable or is comfortable for me to draw without having to turn the page around too much I'm going to keep them fairly close together I'm using a much lighter touch on my pen so the nibs on these um, the Sakura um, Pigma Sensei, um, these plastic nibs, they do have some give in them and if you draw very lightly then you can get finer lines than if you draw with a normal hand weight, weight of your hand, the amount you press down. So I tend to be heavy handed, hence why I wreck these so quickly. It's not just the paper I like to use but it's my handedness. I think I prefer this to the perks because I think the perks are just too similar in shape to the fronds. And this way I'm getting a better contrast between the background and foreground. Black or black would have done it as well, but sometimes it's nice to have a bit of variation. And I think this is nice. You don't have to be all that neat with it. Try not to have the lines overlapping the other lines. But it's quite interesting if you do have gaps in places in the cross hatching. And I sometimes deliberately leave them. So it looks a bit more like Hessian than it does, you know, really neat and tidy. That little from there is lost in it, so I'm just going to cross hatch over it. And I've got a bit of a mess there so I'll thicken the line yeah I much prefer that side that I think the other side would be okay with shadow and highlights okay two more 
Let's see if we can do two quite quickly. Um, tell you what, I'm going to do. Ooh, this could possibly be fun, and it could possibly be a nightmare. Let's have a look. I'm going to create a grid inside this big Huggins. So how did I do that? I started by equally spacing three here, then three here. Then I thought, well, the middle ones are going to be in a straight line. So if I, if I spread them out, I can then work on getting these sort of like in curved lines to match the shape of the that this place of Huggins. And I'm going to do a Huggins inside Huggins. Because I can. And when you draw the grid on such a big scale, there are so many things you can do inside the shapes that are created by the grid. So I've got Huggins inside Huggins. Fairly regular kind of grid here. But I'm going to just pop these lines around. Not forgetting to do the ones that are on the end here, those circles. And we need to start with them here because the grid would sort of go off and under this shape. So we'll do them that way and now can we do them this way again, not forgetting these bits on the edge that are only little bits of Huggins but we still need to go around those little circles. Got that one because I'm talking. And that's it all done. So a Huggins inside a Huggins. That is a bit of a mind bender. And so how am I going to fill these in? I think I'm going to do my favourite one here, which is just like this. Which are having the V shapes going towards the centre of the Huggins shape, but not touching. And an aura inside. Let's do it on this side as well. I don't know what it is about filling these in in this manner, but it really does make me very happy. But you find that, perhaps, that you find your favourite way of doing things. It doesn't mean you shouldn't explore, because you never know, you might find a new favourite way, or have a list of favourite ways. The important thing, I think, about keeping records of all these variations is having a book where you can refer to them, is that they're a source of inspiration, of alternatives. You think, well, I've drawn Huggins here today, or I've done this pattern here today, so what else can I do, or what could I do that would be different this time? And it makes it interesting because they, every way of filling this um, grid in gives a different feel to the overall grid. It's hard to tell when I'm doing such a melange or a, oh, what do you call it? It's like a collage of patterns. That's a good way of describing it. A collage, a pattern collage or a sampler is it's hard to see how these individual patterns would work in a grid on their own. But it allows you to work out if you like these individual patterns or not and whether they're worthwhile pursuing in a grid. Because um, I don't know how many of them would work. Some of them would work really well if we just use the 
or if I just use the basic hugging shape as a, as a kind of motif in my you know drawing sort of like a focal point or you know individual ones of these shapes tucked in behind things sticking out suggesting there's 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 you know like little treasures there because they, they do look like little strange boxes um but there's there's um there's so many things that you can do what i'm going to do here is paradox I'm starting at this corner and I'm drawing a line that roughly follows the shape of this line that gets slightly wider towards the end. Draw, turn my paper, the end of this line, I'm going to do the same thing so it gets slightly wider towards the end. Start here, slightly wider towards the end. And again, you start at the end of that line and you keep going and you keep on going round and round and round and try and keep the distance at the bottom about the same. Sometimes I like to start at the other end and draw backwards because I can find, I find that I can control the distance at the ends a lot more but it doesn't matter but as you do this these lines spiral around and you're creating you know we've got a smaller version of this outside shape here now but it's slightly tilted and so we get this tilting and spiraling of the shape that's in a nice kind of way I also find if I draw some of them from op the opposite end to how you would normally draw them, so like this one, I don't have to turn my paper quite so much. So you have to be mindful of the shape of the line, you just can't draw any old line. But Just keep going until you can't fit any more in. And I can't fit any more in there. So we've got that kind of shape. These shapes always remind me of well. It's, you know, it's very similar to that. So I've got all of these here. And today, I'm just going to leave them as they are. I'm not going to add any shadow, any colour. I'm just going to let them speak for themselves. Because I just think... But this has just worked out really quite nicely um, and I'm going to think about colour or sh adding shadow. I'm so tempted to add shadow, you know me. Uh, it brings these to life. Perhaps I will, just very briefly. See I say I'm going to finish and then I don't. Why do I do this? I'm sure somebody will have a very good reason as to why I do this. I inflict this upon myself. I have no idea basically. Okay, I need my glasses again. But I've got um, I've got chalk pastel here, and I'm going to very quickly. It's blue, but I'm happy to have blue as a shadow. Ultimately, it's not important what colour you use for a shadow. The importance is that you make one end darker than the other. You know what I mean. Sometimes I wonder if I actually make sense when I talk. I'm going to do these Hugginses here, because the Huggins and the Huggins. So I just think that these will be fine. I'm not worried about putting the chalk over the black. It's not like graphite. It will move quite happily. I'm also going to pop shadow down the sides here and also under the edges here so we get that should give it a kind of pillow shape as we blend this out so I've got a paper stump here it's quite a big one but I'm, I'm cool with that so I'll start with the outside edges and just blend them out so 
we get shadow along the edge and then I'm just going to add some shadow here so much quicker than using a brush and, and paints and go back and just see how far I want to bring that shadowing down so it does blend as long as you don't put too much chalk in or you blend the chalk quite a lot where it's heaviest then you've only got a little bit you can move around there so there we are instant instant dimension um for the piece i think i'm just going to do that shadow around the edge here or inside these borders into the edge and yes, yeah, some of the colours might end up being hit with shadow, but I'm not too worried if that's the case. I've left the pencil lines here. I haven't erased them. Because I'm, I'm thinking they might disappear once I blend this out a little bit. But if I really want to remove them at a later date, I suppose I can. But this is this is going in my sketchbook. I'm going to be sticking this in my sketchbook afterwards. So that works, that actually works quite nicely. There we go. Um, this one, I'm going to put shadow at the lower points of these triangles, these triangular shapes we get, you know, going from the corners, I suppose, of the heaven shape. Not sure how far along I'm going to take that. The outside ones, I think I will make them longer than the inside ones, but I want to emphasize the, the curviness of these shapes, I think. So, but on the outside edge, I'm going to add that little bit extra shadow there just to suggest that it's perhaps a little bit underneath the border on the outside. Taking shadow down towards the middle as well. Don't want to go too far along. Leave some highlights. So that has, that's brought out some dimension there. Okay, Diva Dance. I think with this one again, it's one that I'm just going to pop some shadow around the outside edge. And here I've gone over into the into that border, but I can erase it mostly, which is fine by me. And I can just do that and this, and that just adds some of that shadow. If I want a bit more shadow, I can just add some more of this where I'd like it to be that little bit darker. And I'm not worried about the neatness of this because the, the, the whole purpose of the um, paper stump or tortillon is to spread the chalk pastel out. It smooths out the imperfections. So if you're worried about um, how you want smooth colouring or shading, go for something like chalk pastels and use those to and a paper stump. And it's quite miraculous how the imperfections disappear. I didn't do my starry sky. I've got black stars, but that doesn't mean they can't have a, a background, is it? So I am going to go around the edges here. And I've realised I've gone outside a little bit there, but that's okay because I can use the eraser on the end again just to get rid of it. That works until you use the tortillon because what, it, what this does is it helps to push the chalk particles into the paper so they become fixed in place. They're less likely to smudge if you touch them or you know, open and close sketchbook pages and they won't move on to other drawings as well. This is a good way of doing it. If you want to be super, super, super secure, you can buy a fixative spray, but if you buy a, ch a can of the cheapest, cheapest hairspray you can find, that works in exactly the same way. You give it a very light misting and the tackiness of the hairspray holds the 
chalk particles to the paper and um, it works just as well. I think it's, you know, it's probably archival, I don't know, but trip tip I picked up whilst doing my A-level art because I did some big chalk pastel drawings and I mean big. They were A, not A2, yeah A2 in size, not A3. Enormous. So it would be look like um, putting, well two of these would make A4, four of those would make A3 and Oh God, headshot. A lot <laughs> would make a ho. It would be like having four of these in this way and four of those in the other way. So 16 of these. There we are. Actually, that's worked really nicely with the love. That really helps to show, you know, that's got a lovely shine in the middle of it. I'm impressed with myself there. Okay, with this one, I'm going to pop shadow underneath this middle band. I'm also going to pop some shadow on this side. I'm going to go up around this side. Now, these white dots I've drawn are in souffle, a souffle pen. So they have some texture and the chalk shouldn't stick to them. They've had plenty of time to dry properly. And if they do, if the chalk does stick to them, I get slightly blue dots and I'm fine with that. I want pure white dots so I can go back over them with um, with the souffle pen again because it will go over the top of itself and stick quite happily. So I'm bringing out the structure of the Huggins rather than um, adding shadow perhaps to the individual elements, although we can do that. So I think these would benefit from a little bit of shadow at the bottom of these spirals there and just gently move that around just to give that little bit of shadow at the bottom perhaps there perhaps a little bit just above there just to make it look like these are sinking behind the petals so there's that one okay last couple because I'm going to finish this and then I'll be able to stick it in my sketchbook in a little while. I may very well get the souffle pen out and add some little patterns of white dots. Um, I much I don't like drawing with gel pens particularly. I don't mind gel pens that are designed for writing, um, the, like the, um, the zebra sarasas. Um, I've got a set of those in vintage colours and they're really lovely to draw with. Um, the same, they've got um, an Arteza set of very similar colours, but they, they're they a bigger line width, they're 0.7, and I think the Sarasas are 0.5. Um, but the line is much smaller than 0.5. So there's my R. So I'm just leaving a little bit in the middle that is... Uh, mostly light. I want some of these in black, uh, in blue, because I want to pop some any white I put there to show up. And then the last ones, I've got these here, so I am going to pop shadow at the bottom of these and where they overlap, like so. So I'm creating, making them look a bit more like berries now, giving them that kind of feeling that they're spherical rather than, well, you know, spherical-ish, rather than just, you know, flat circles or circular shapes that we've drawn. And adding shadow here helps to think that they're actually behind one another, which is exactly what they are. But the other thing I can do is I can go around the edge now. And I, I'm doing this after I've done the others because I want to darken this. And I want to try to keep the shadow right on the edge. 
so by doing it last I can control where that shading is so there we are it's my moonberry uh, this one oh gosh am I going to do this one I think this one is best done like I've done the others to be honest or many of the others is to emphasize this the the um the Huggins shape to begin with have a look at that and see how that will work or not as the case may be so just teasing this up a little bit so I've got some perhaps these um, fronds are shadowed but the the flower is mainly perhaps white and that stands out there okay and the last one is this curious curious um, pattern here I like this pattern I think it is rather fun I do like putting these shadows in on these Huggins, but I think I might add some to the grid pattern as well between these because the subtle go down the side perhaps each side and blend that chalk in and tease it down a bit from the top down the middle as well and then by going in between them we're getting that shadow around these shapes which hopefully will lend to a sense of volume, sphericity almost. So we've got all of that. The last thing I would do, and I'm not going to do all of these with you, but to finish this off we need shadow underneath all of these. Just to lift this off and I'm going to move this down quite a way as if there's quite a big shadow here underneath these this area. I'll do it on the next one as well. I do tend to do these one at a time. Less likely to smudge the stuff if I work on it and work it into the paper if I move on to the next one. Because I am clumsy. Yesterday, I remember putting my hand in the wet souffle as I was drawing because I just forgot I had to avoid it. And I'll do the same here. Just to add some shadow here. And there we can we have that so let me just move this so it's all in shot because I need a nice pretty picture for my social media postings <laughs> and there we go pile of pens and pencils there um, what do you think the shadows do do add something to it um, I think I part of me likes using chalk pastels far more than I do the graphite tints now um, just this single colour and you're just using shadow and highlights you have to let me know what you think I think there's charm in them both it's just I'm just not very good with watercolours full stop I use them and I just think what was I thinking so I hope you've enjoyed this this is one page I have got something ready for another session of Huggins if you would like it because this is the third video over the weekend i may or may not release videos i'm not sure depends how i feel depends what ideas i come up with i'm never short of ideas but we'll see um but i do have this grid to work with and it's op arty where i've got the vertical lines start close together and gradually get wider to the middle and then start to get closer again and the horizontal lines start narrow at the top and gradually get wider and wider towards the bottom so this is the biggest space and the ones on the corners here are the smallest spaces 
and you can see how the shape of Huggins has changed. But I just thought that would be a fun one to have a look at. It's, a, it's another version of a crazy kind of Huggins shape. So let me have a look. No, looking at different kinds of grids you could use as a possibility as well, because that applies to other gridded patterns. This would apply to Huggins, but you could also do it with any sort of square grid. Um, I haven't got my head around whether you can do it with a triangular grid or not yet. I, I, I'm not entirely sure that could even work, but it could possibly. Um, just let me know if you'd like to see more of this or whether you'd like to see the grids done, perhaps with a different pattern. Um, so I know somebody said Huggins and Well are two of their favourite patterns, and I agree with that. They're two of my favourite ones as well. Um, I've got many favourite patterns. I have a fondness for Diva Dance, for example, and for others. So I'm going to leave that here. I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me. If you've enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. And if you know of anybody or any people or any groups that might like to see this, or just follow my videos or join in drawing with me, then please share the videos with them. That would be fantastic. Or my channel, that would be fantastic as well. Um, so thank you. Take care of yourselves. Look after yourselves. And above all else, find time to be creative. Bye bye. Hoyle.